Over the past weeks, there were several news stories warning that the consumption of xylitol is linked to heart attacks and strokes. Now, these stories refer to a 2024 study titled Xylitol is Prothrombotic and Associated with Cardiovascular Risk. Now, the authors established a correlation between elevated blood levels of xylitol and cardiovascular disease. But does that mean that your low-carb chocolate or protein powder sweetened with xylitol will give you a heart attack? Well, in my opinion, it does not, and I would explain why. Now, xylitol is a natural sweetener that is found in small amounts in fruit and vegetables. It has a one-to-one -one sweetness to table sugar, and therefore is an easy substitute to regular sugar in, co in cooking recipes. So it has roughly about a half of the calories of glucose, and it may be beneficial for the health of our teeth. And there are several studies that are highlighting this. Our own body also produces xylitol at around 5 to 15 grams daily during normal metabolic processes. So this is something inherent to our bodies that we make xylitol ourselves in small amounts. Now, the amount of xylitol that's consumed with sweetened food or beverages is significantly higher, and it's usually on the order of up to 30 grams per serving. And this can increase our xylitol blood levels up to 1,000 fold for a short period of time. Now, the study that vilified xylitol did not, in fact, measure xylitol intake, so it didn't measure what people ate in terms of foods or beverages that contain xylitol. But they looked at xylitol blood levels in subjects that were in extremely poor metabolic health. The average age was 64. 72% had high blood pressure. 76% had a history of cardiovascular disease. Another 76% had a history of coronary artery disease. 46% had a history of a heart attack, 22% had diabetes, 77% were taking aspirin to prevent heart attacks, and so on. So as you can see, it's a very metabolically unfit uh, cohort here that they looked at, right? Now, initially, the data seemed to suggest an 80% relative risk increase in people that had higher blood levels of xylitol. So that's obviously pretty profound. So as an example, if, let's say, the initial risk for, let's say, a heart attack was, let's say, arbitrarily 5%, then an 80% relative uh, risk increase, a relative risk increase of, of uh, 80% would raise the absolute risk of 5% to 8.5%. However, when the researchers then adjusted for factors like C-reactive protein and other metabolic markers in these patients, it seemed that the relative risk decreased to under 10%. So that's a big difference. So a hypothetical initial risk of 5% would then increase to 5.5%. And this seems, of course, to be a lot less worrisome. Now, this is a statistical strategy that's often used in medications as well. So, for example, with statins, these are medications to lower, uh, of course, your uh, bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol. It may say on the bottle that this medication reduces your risk of cardiovascular events by 30%. And that sounds, of course, incredible. I mean, who wouldn't want that medication, right? But that is the relative risk reduction. For example, here, if your absolute risk is, and that's fairly realistic, about 1%, then the medication, the statin, would reduce that risk from 1% to 0.7%. And given these numbers, it becomes a lot less impressive and should lead you to an active decision-making process if the side effects of a particular medication are worth the benefits here. But I digress. Now, the researchers then looked at mice, uh, which were genetically engineered to have arterial problems. So they had an arterial predisposition to plaque formation. And so they actually do, did have plaque in their arteries. And they found that xylitol can increase the risk of plaque ver uh, worsening. So, you know, it, it made those arterial plaques worse and it increased the risk for blood clots. So they confirmed this in an animal model. So they used, the, again, a mouse population with very compromised cardiovascular health, and they saw that high oral amounts of xylitol, or they sometimes inject them as well, uh, worsened their um, atherosclerotic plaques and potential to form blood clots. And then they gave human subjects 30 gram of xylitol, because again, this seems to be the upper amount, I would say, present in a serving size of sweetened drinks or food, right? And as mentioned before, this dose can increase a subject xylitol blood levels up to 1,000-fold, which on its surface sounds, of course, concerning. But we have to keep in mind that xylitol is very quickly metabolized and returns essentially to baseline within one to two hours. So if you have your xylitol sweetened drink, within one to two hours, you're back to your original baseline of xylitol, right? 
They then collected platelets from the subjects and noticed that when they added an agonist, and the way I understand this is that an agonist is a chemical uh, similar to those released from the lining of the blood vessel when an injury occurs, for example, during a cut, right? So there's an injury, you, you cut a blood vessel and chemicals are released uh, that are then triggering platelets to become sticky in order to clog up the wound and pre pre that prevents us from bleeding out, right? This is the first line of defense in blood clotting. It's a very important part of blood clotting, but an agonist was sort of needed for this, right? And they noticed that the platelets from subjects with the higher xylitol blood levels in the presence of this added agonist had an increased rate of aggregation and thrombosis. So this was sort of um, an in vitro test of their theory that xylitol contributes to making platelets more sticky, again, in the presence of an agonist, right? But again, we have to keep in mind that, you know, this patient cohort had an elevated baseline of xylitol due to their poor metabolic health. So there are some enzymatic pathways that are not functioning very well in people with poor metabolic health. And this leads to elevated blood levels of sugar alcohols. So in other words, um, this is an intrinsic, consistent elevation of xylitol, which differs greatly from the short-term elevated blood xylitol levels that a healthier person has upon consuming xylitol in, in a drink or with some food, right? And uh, furthermore, elevated xylitol levels itself, I mean, this was not sufficient to trigger the platelets to become more sticky, but an agonist was needed uh, here to make this happen. And um, the experiment was done in vitro, so it was done out of the body rather than in vivo. And of course, it's necessary and understandable, but also a lot of things change when you have an in vitro experiment, which more mimics the real surrounding of these platelets. When we take the platelets out, and we test them, they might behave differently than they would inside the body. And that's a very important point as well, of course, right? So this greatly decreases the causative effect of xylitol on cardiovascular events and blood clots, in my opinion. And understanding this a bit better now, I must say that the way the media portrayed this was extremely misleading. I think that we should limit all sugar substitutes to very small amounts only. However, natural sweeteners can be helpful in people trying to decrease their caloric intake. And I would say in, this in the case of xylitol, this also has some other benefits as well, like for our teeth and possibly actually for our digestive system. Now, vilifying xylitol based on this data is incorrect in my opinion. The study looked at extremely sick individuals that due to their very poor metabolic health had an increased natural baseline of xylitol. And the study did not look at the relative risk uh, to xylitol consumption. So in my opinion, if you are metabolically healthy and you have a, let's say, protein powder or a chocolate that's sweetened with xylitol, then I do not have much concern here. On the other hand, if you are a metabolically very sick person with a history of cardiovascular disease, then avoiding sugar alcohols, and this is not limited to xylitol because it seems like erythritol may behave similarly here, to decrease even the slight and short-lived increase in possible platelet activation from baseline may be the more conservative strategy for you. Now, I, for one, will keep my xylitol and stevia-sweetened vanilla whey protein powder, and I'm not afraid to order another tub when I run out. Now, if this was helpful, please um, subscribe and leave a comment. I'm highly interested in if you are, based on the study or other data, avoid sugar alcohols like xylitol or erythritol. And also, you know, um, if you had looked into data and if you um, had found other sources that sort of confirmed the theory that this actually contributes uh, from the consumption of xylitol or erythritol to an increased uh, state of uh, blood clots and, of course, an increased risk of, uh, for the cardiovascular system. So, um, yeah, please leave a comment, and I certainly will read all those and love times that lead to further videos.